everyone, Zach Pickoff here, and welcome back to another lesson video. Today, I will be going over the 9-4 Work Together and On Your Own. So let's jump right into the video. Okay, so as I had stated before, I am going to be going over the 9-4 Work Together and On Your Own. In the last video, I read over the 9-4 text. If you did miss that video for any reason, please click the link in the description. But anyway, today I will be going over the 9-4 Work Together and On Your Own, where we will be journalizing other transactions using a general journal. So the instructions say, a general journal for Rude Electric is given in the working papers. Your instructor will guide you through the following example. Number one, using the current year, journalize the following transactions on page eight of the general journal. Source documents are abbreviated as follows. Memorandum M, debit memorandum DM. Save your work to complete on your own 9-4. All right, so as you can see here, we are given two transactions and they are dated on October 5th and 7th. For the on your own, the instructions say, use the general journal that you started for work together 9-4. Work on this problem independently. Number one, using the current year, journalize the following transactions continuing on the next blank line of page eight of the general journal. Source documents are abbreviated as follows. Memorandum M, debit memorandum DM. Okay, so as you can see here, we are also given two transactions, and they are dated on October 11th and 14th. All right, so now that I've read over the instructions, let's jump right into the 9-4 work together and on your own. All righty, so now we're gonna be moving on to the 9-4 work together and on your own, in which we will be journalizing other transactions using a general journal. So the first thing that we're going to do is put in the page number for this general journal, which is going to be page number eight. Now that we have put in the page number for this general journal, we are now ready to move on to the transactions. So this first transaction reads, on October 5th, bought store supplies on account from Designer Supplies, $180, memorandum number 35. Okay, so for this transaction, the first thing that we're going to do is put in the date, which is October 5th, of the current year, which is 2021, in the date column. Next, we're going to put in the words supplies-store in the account title column. After that, we're going to put in the source document, which is M35 in the document number column. And then we're going to record the amount, which is $180 in the debit column. The next thing that we're going to do is put in the words accounts payable designer supplies in the account title column. After that, we're going to place a slash in the post reference column. And then we're going to record the amount, which is $180 in the credit column. Okay, so that was the first transaction. This next transaction reads, on October 7th, returned merchandise to Hendrix Products, $540, debit memorandum, number 65. All right, so for this transaction, again, the first thing that we're going to do is put in the date, which is October 7th, in the date column. Next, we're going to put in the words accounts payable 
Hendrix products in the account title column. After that, we're going to put in the source document, which is DM65 in the document number column. Next, we're going to place a slash in the post reference column. And then we're going to record the amount, which is $540 in the debit column. The next thing that we're going to do is put in the words purchases, returns, and allowances in the account title column. And then we're going to record the amount, which is $540 in the credit column. All right, so that was the second transaction. This next transaction reads, on October 11th, bought office supplies on account from Office Express, $240, memorandum number 36. Okay, so for this transaction, again, the first thing that we're going to do is put in the date, which is October 11th, in the date column. Next, we're going to put in supplies-office in the account title column. After that, we're going to put in the source document, which is M36, in the document number column. And then we're going to record the amount, which is $240 in the debit column. The next thing that we're going to do is put in the words accounts payable Office Express in the account title column. After that, we're going to place a slash in the post reference column. And then we're going to record the amount, which is $240 in the credit column. Okay, so that was the third transaction. This fourth and final transaction reads, on October 14th, returned merchandise to Fretz Industries, $1,200. $39, debit memorandum number 66. All right, so for this transaction, again, the first thing that we're going to do is put in the date, which is October 14th, in the date column. Next, we're going to put in the words accounts payable, Fretz Industries, in the account title column. After that, we're going to put in the source document, which is DM66 in the document number column. Next, we're going to place a slash in the post reference column. And then we're going to record the amount, which is $1,239 in the debit column. The next thing that we're going to do is put in the words purchases, returns, and allowances in the account title column. And then we're going to record the amount, which is $1,239 in the credit column. All right, so that was the fourth and final transaction, and it's also the end of the 9-4 work together and on your own. In the next video, I will be going over the 10-1 text. Okay, thank you.